welcome 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 it's about that time welcome to the word of the day today we want to examine the life of abraham and why it is that god called him a righteous man and his friend so stay tuned we'll be right back from the time that noah walked out of the ark after the flood his sons would produce seed and five generations would walk the earth. A man named Nahor would have a son, and his name was Terah. Now Terah came out of the bloodline of Shem, who was Noah's middle son. He would have three sons. His eldest was Abram. His middle son was Nahor, who was named after his father. And his youngest son was named Haran. Now Haran had a son named Lot. And Haran died in the land of Er of, of the Chaldeans before his father Terah. Now Terah was a wicked man. Based on Jewish writings, he was an idolatrous priest who manufactured idols. He was an idol worshiper. And if you know anything about the Ten Commandments, God said, You shall have no other God before me. Abram opposed his father's beliefs. And it's said that he would smash his father's idols and drive customers out of uh, Terah's idol shop. Terah's remaining sons, who were Abraham and Nahor, had two wives. Abraham's wife was Sarai, and Nahor's wife was Milcah. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, was barren. She didn't have any children. Eventually, Terah decided, the father decided, that he wanted to go on a journey to Canaan, and he took his eldest son, Abram. His grandson, Lot, and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, also went with them. On their way to Canaan, they stopped in the land of Haran, and Terah, Abraham's father, died there. Now, Terah, by interpretation, means to tarry or delay. So, Abram's destiny would tarry or be delayed because of the life of his father, Terah, because, because Abraham was an honorable man, God knew that he would honor his father first. So God waited until Terah departed his life to speak to Abraham about what God wanted Abraham to do. Many times we do not walk in our destiny until God has set us apart or we are alone. That way we can hear God and there are no other distractions. Then the Lord spoke to Abraham. And he told him to leave his father's house and to part from the land where his father dwelt around his other kindred so he wouldn't have any bad influences on him. And God said to a land that I will show you. This is Genesis 12. It says in Genesis 12, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country from your kindred, from your relatives, from thy father's house. Unto a land I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. So Abram left the land of Haran, as the Lord told him, and he took his wife, and his nephew Lot, and all their possessions, and those that chose to follow him and ventured out of Haran. Abraham was 75 years at this time when he left. So they headed toward the land of Canaan that his father never made it to. So Abram made it to the land of Sechem, to the plains of Moreh. Abram saw that there were Canaanite people in that land, and the Lord spoke to Abraham there and told him, I will give you this land to your descendants. So that Abram, so Abram's heart was moved and worshipped God there because of what he said, and he built an altar unto the Lord. And then Abram went to Bethel, and there on the east side of a mountain in Bethel, Abram erected another altar unto the Lord. So we can see clearly that Abram really was a true worshiper of God. So Abram continued to go south, and at that time there was a great famine in the land. 
So Abram went down to Egypt. Uh, there was a great famine in the land. Egypt was an uh, Afrocentric nation, a nation of color, and uh, they had immense resources in, um, in Egypt. There was the Nile River, so they had plenty of water. Uh, there was copper, there was gold, there was flax. Flax was, used, flax was used for its fiber, which made yarn, fabric, nutritious seeds such as flaxseed. Flaxseed also produces uh, linseed. Linseed could be made into natural oils. Uh, nowadays, it's used for preservatives for wood and concrete and in greaves and paints and varnishes and stains. And as if it wasn't enough, it can also be used as soaps and inks. Uh, and then th there was salt in the land of Egypt. Salt was also used in the land, which is a preservative and helped in digestion. And um, interestingly enough, uh, salt is uh, the right amount of salt in the body will kill bacteria. So, uh, so salt can help with fighting germs. And um, there was also limestone in Egypt. There was also sandstone in Egypt, which helped with uh, building, like building the pyramids. And so there was a lot of uh, different resources in Egypt, which, which is why a lot of times in biblical times, a lot of people during the famines would always go down to Egypt. So Egypt had vast resources while the rest of the world was starving. So Abram goes down to Egypt to survive during the famine. Because Sarah, Sarah was a very beautiful woman, when Abraham got to near Egypt, he told his wife Sarah to tell them that uh, she was his sister because they might try to kill uh, me if they know you're my wife. But my thing is, if he tells, she tells the Egyptians that um, that's my brother, they might still try to take where Mar they might still try to take Sarah into themselves and have uh, lay with her or marry her, and that's exactly what they tried to do. When men, when the men uh, close to Pharaoh saw how beautiful she was, they went and told Pharaoh. So Pharaoh has Sarah come into his palace or to his house, and now they uh, they they treated Abraham very well because of Sarai, and uh, uh, Pharaoh gave. Um, him sheep. Pharaoh gave him sheep and oxen, and he had asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and camels. But sure enough, though Abraham, but I'm sure even though Abraham received all these great things, he was concerned that his wife was in the Pharaoh's house. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his entire house because he took Sarah in unto him. Uh, now, the Lord didn't just plague Pharaoh, but he plagued anyone in Pharaoh's house so they, they wouldn't even try to touch Sarai. So he made, God made everybody in, in the house sick. So the Pharaoh goes to Abram and said, what is this you have done to us? For God revealed it unto me that this is your wife. The Pharaoh said to Abram, why did you deceive me? Why did you not tell me that uh, she was your wife? Instead of your sister, I could have taken her in unto me and laid with her. And since, uh, since God is a God of order, he set uh, what was wrong right. But God said, uh, so God allows Pharaoh to correct his error. And so the Pharaoh gives Sarah back to Abram and him away with all these different resources that they gave him. So God worked it out so everything went well with Abraham. So Abraham left Egypt and journeyed south uh, with his family and possessions. Abraham became very wealthy with all the possessions that he, uh, ate, that he uh, obtained from Egypt. For, uh, for he uh, acquired livestock, he acquired gold, he acquired silver. He, uh, then he settled in Pinson's tent near Bethel and Ai where he first built an altar unto the Lord. Abraham gives a perfect example of that we should all have a place and a time devoted to God where we come and we worship him. We can see that that set Abraham apart from other men because of his devotion to God. We can never go wrong by putting God first in all that we do. Lot also increased because of the blessings of Abraham walking in. 
Lot had great wealth as well, to the point that they were not able to dwell in the same place together. They, their company had become so large that the um, Lot's herdsmen were fighting with Abraham's herdsmen. They would go to feed their cattle and Abraham's herdsmen would be in a way or Lot's herdsmen would be in a way. So they're arguing and quarreling with each other. So Lot and Abraham come together and Abraham says, uh, it's not good that we argue since we are family. We, um, we have the world before us. So you choose where you want to go. And if you go to the left, then I'll go to the right. So Lot agrees. So Lot saw the plains of the Jordan. They were very prosperous. They looked good to him. So Lot looked around and saw that the whole uh, plain of the Jordan toward Zoar was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. It was very prosperous where he could do well there, full of fruits full of grains, and uh, they had an abundance of all that he would ever need. So Lot chose the fertile plains of the Jordan near the city of Zoar, one of the cities of the plain. So he said, I will journey there because the plains of the Jordan near, near the Dead Sea were very prosperous. Green, fertile, fruits, grains, trees. It was a good place to live. Scientists have discovered seeds from that area of the plains were rich in wheat and barley and figs in uh, that region as well as many fruits. Studies show that during the time of the Bronze Age, the Dead Sea was 400 feet higher than it is today. There were also natural springs near the river's edge which provided for groundwater for irrigation of plants uh, but in later time but in later times eventually over centuries the dead sea was not able to replenish itself the amount of salt in the sea was too great it was not enough to sustain sustain life in the dead sea and eventually the life in the ocean died because now even today the Dead Sea is 400 feet lower than um, it was during biblical times because the sea is not replenishing itself. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of Jordan and he set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Abraham stayed in the land of Canaan while Lot enjoyed the cities of the plain. But unfortunately, several of the cities of the plain were overrun with wicked and perverse people who sinned greatly before the Lord. After Lot departed, the Lord reveals himself to Abram. If you notice, every time someone leaves Abram's life, God starts uh, revealing a uh, revelation to him. First it was his father, now it's his nephew Lot. Many times when people leave our life, it's because uh, they will either be a distraction or a hindrance to what God wants to do. So a lot of times God will remove them from our life so he can speak to us and give us revelation or tell us about our destiny. Remember, some people are destined to walk with us and others are only here for a season. And that's a lot of time why certain people will leave your life. So God told Abram, look around from where you are to the north, south, east, and west. All the land that you see, I will give it to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust that is on the ground, then your descendants could be counted. Uh, so God tells them to go walk from the length and the width of the land. I am giving it to you. So Abraham went to uh, live near the great trees of Mamre in Hebron where he pitched his tent. There he built an, uh, another altar to the Lord something about those altars or should i say worship this is in genesis 13 1 through 18. now there was a great king by the name of named kedolomer who reigned over eight other kingdoms in the region around the dead sea now while lot was living in one of the those kingdoms, namely Sodom, the four other cities of the plains, uh, which are Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, Zoar, revolted against this great king, Kedolomar. And the three remaining kingdoms, Shinar, Elazar, and Goyim, were all lauded 
were all loyal to King Condolomar. Now they went to war in the valley of Sidam because they revolted against the great king, which is called the Valley of the Dead Sea or the Valley of Sidam. But they lost the war and Lot and his family were taken captive. They took all his possessions, all his food and everything they had and held him captive. So they carried Lot away and held him captive under the king's direction. Now one of the men that were captive with Lot escaped and he fought and he made it back to Abram in Canaan. Uh, Abram is now near the great trees of Mamre. And when Abraham heard that his nephew Lot had been taken captive, had been taken captive, he called out 318 of tra 318 trained men in his household, basically Abram's army, and they went and pursued after Lot. Now by night Abraham divided his army to attack in one area where the other half would attack in the other area, like David against Goliath. Abraham had the Lord on his side. He had the Lord's backing. So Abraham was able to accomplish what those four other kingdoms could not, the favor of the Lord. We can see that Abram is a very strategic man of war, and he is also has the backing of God as well. And that's all you need, God. Abraham defeated those kings and took Lot back took all that he had, took him back. Abram recovered all Lot's possessions and the men and the women with Lot. After Abraham returned from re, uh, defeating King Kadolomar, King Kadolomar and the kings that aligned with him, which tells us how powerful Abraham truly was, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of uh, Sheba. This is called the King's Valley. This is in Genesis 14. 18 through 20, it says, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the high priest of the Most High God, and he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to the God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. That through the high priest, Melchizedek, blessed Abraham. Abraham gave him a tenth of his possessions. This is the first time in the Bible that it speaks of tithing. Abraham is a man of honor, and when he encounters the high priest of God, the first thing that he does is he gives a tithe of 10% of all that he has. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I made an oath. And I swore to the Lord, the God Most High, Creator of heaven and earth, that I will not accept nothing that belongs to you. Absolutely nothing. So that you can never say that you made me rich. God is, God is my source. Abraham said, I will not accept nothing but what these men have eaten. His men. This is in Genesis 14. Then the Lord reveals himself again unto Abram in a vision. He said, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. This is in Genesis 15 and 1. Abram said to God, What will you give me, seeing that I do not have any children? Now there was a man named Eliezer of Damascus that sought refuge with Abram, and he remained with Abram. Eliezer was so grateful that uh, Abram gave him refuge that he became very close to Abram. And Abraham says to the Lord, I am childless and I, that, and all that I have, there is no one, no, there is no heir for me to give my possessions to, to give my inheritance to. So by now, Abram is close to a hundred years old and eventually he will become too old to produce seed in order to have a ch he will be too old to produce seed in order to have a son. So Abram says to God, Now Eliezer is a good steward in my house. I could potentially give my possessions to him. You have given me no son to receive my inheritance. So if we know anything of God, we should know this, that God always waits until it seems like it is impossible. We should always remember that God is the God of the impossible.
So if you have the faith to believe, He can work it out. He can work out the impossible for you. So the Lord tells Abram, Eliezer will not be your heir or a substitute in the place of your son. But I will perform a miracle and you will have your son. God told Abram, look towards the heavens and tell me how many stars you see. And if you can number those stars, you can number your descendants. His descendants will be too vast to number. So the patriarch of faith believed God. And God being pleased with how much Abraham had faith viewed him as righteous. For it is not what you do that makes you pleasing to God, but it's in who you believe in trust that makes you pleasing. So many religions try to do works and acts that make them pleasing to God, but there is nothing, but there is only one way to be pleasing to God, and that is through faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if you can believe it through God, you will receive it. And he believed, and Abraham believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted it to him as righteousness. Again, Abraham had faith in God, and it made him righteous. We have faith in Jesus, and Jesus makes us righteous. So righteousness is not an act or a work or something that we do. Righteousness is a person. Abraham says to God, how should I know? that I shall inherit it. So God told Abraham, take a female cow of three years, a female goat of three years, and a ram of three years. Then he told him, then he told him to also take two birds, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. The animal of three years old reveals that they are pure. They um and those animals are like a virgin, they are pure. So Abram sacrifices them and cuts them down the middle and lays them side by side and lays them side by side next to each other. And he sacrificed the heifer and the ram and the goat to the Lord on the altar. But the turtle dove and the pigeon he did not sacrifice. And when the birds tried to come down and eat the dead carcasses of the cow and the ram and the goat, Abraham would shoo them away. Abraham um, would shoo them away. And when it began to get dark, and it began to get dark, Abraham fell asleep and a great, uh, a great darkness fell upon him from the Lord. And the Lord said, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not there, and shall serve them. They shall be slaves, which is Egypt, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And Afterward shall they come out with great substance. This is Genesis fifteen thirteen through 14. So if we've ever heard of Moses, this is a nation of Israel. They were in Egypt as slaves for 400 years. And after that 400 years, they were delivered. And uh, Pharaoh had them go out with gold and all this substance. So they came out richer than when they went in. So God is giving Abraham a prophetic dream to show him to show him what he's going to do for the nation of Israel. So God reveals prophetically about Abraham's future of the nation of Israel, and they will end up slaves in Egypt for 400 years, and then eventually they will come out. So as the sacrifices that Abraham burnt on the altar to God, God makes a covenant with Abraham, the different territories that his people will inherit. Because this is through our worship, that we reveal to God what He means to us, and He blesses us for our devotion. Now Sarai, Sarai, Abram's wife, had no children, and she had a handmaiden, an Egyptian woman of color, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord has stopped me from having children. I pray thee, please go, in unto my handmaiden, and lay in, that I may have children by her. 
this is never good. This is never good when you try to work things out on your own because you didn't have enough faith at the time to believe God was going to do what he said he was going to do. So, so Sarah decides that she's going to tell her husband, her husband, to go into another woman's tent to lay with her so that she can have a child so that can be his heir and she can have a child through her handmaiden. Not a good idea. So Sarah tries to work it out herself. So Abram decides to appease his wife, and he does as his wife says, and he goes into Hagar. After ten years of being in Canaan, Sarah took Hagar, her handmaiden, and gave her to her husband. So they've been there for about ten years. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived, and she got pregnant as Sarah wanted. And when Hagar saw that she was pregnant now, she despised Sarah. And Sarah, saw, and Sarah said unto Abram, her husband, My mistake has now affected you. I have given my handmaiden to you, and now she has a son. I am hated in her eyes, the Lord just between me and you. <clears throat> but Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, she is your handmaiden, the choice is yours. Do as you see pleasing in your sight to do. Now Hagar thinking that since she is pregnant by Abram, she thinks that she can treat Sarai any old way. She would be wrong. She is Abraham's wife. So Sarai confronted her. And when she confronted her, Hagar ran away. Uh, if it was me, how, who do you think you are? Basically, that's what Sarah said to Hagar. And the angel of the Lord found Hagar uh, by a fountain, uh, uh, by a fountain of water in the wilderness. And the fountain is called the fountain of Sher. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's handmaiden. Notice that he, the angel addressed her as Sarai's handmaiden. For Sarah, being Abram's wife, has God's favor. And the angel says, where did you come from and where are you going? Because Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt gave Hagar to Sarah when they left. And they know Sarah because they almost died because of Sarah. Because they laid with her. So uh, the angel saying, you are a servant of Sarai. And Hagar said to the angel, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself thyself under her hands or humble yourself to her. Get rid of the fear and humble yourself to her. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. So by humbling herself unto Sarah, the Lord is going to bless her. The angel told her, her seed or her descendants will be a great nation. For behold, thou art with child and shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael. So this angel is Gabriel, for Gabriel is the one who brings messages from God. The angel goes on to say, Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, your son will be wild, your son will be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man against his hand. He will be a fighter, a warrior, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God, the God that seeth me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me. Wherefore, wherefore the well where she was is called Berla, it's called Berleroy. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Kadesh and Berit. And Hagar bare Abram a son like the angel of the Lord said. And Abram called his name Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old, or eighty-six, when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. This is Genesis 6, 1 through 16. And when Abraham was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham again and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. God goes on to say, I will make my covenant between you and me. I will multiply and Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And he said, Neither shall thy name any more be Abram. 
for thy name shall be Abraham. For the, for the father of many nations have I made thee. So Abraham means the father of many nations. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful or blessed. And I will make, and I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come from thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed and thy seed after thee in their generations for everlasting and everlasting covenant a covenant without end meaning this blessing will never end it will be forever to be a god unto thee and to thy seed after thee and i will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art now a stranger all the land of canaan for everlasting possession and I will be their God. And God said unto Abram, Thou shalt keep my commandments, you and your seed after thee, in their generations. This is the covenant which ye shall keep between me and you, thy, thy seed after thee. So the nation of Israel, every man child among you, shall be cut cut or circumcised. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and this will be a sign of our covenant. So every man over eight days old and in Abraham's house began to become circumcised. So any man, any, so any person over eight years old that dwelt with Abraham had to be circumcised. God said, any man not circumcised will be cut off from his people. And the uncircumcised man whose flesh of the foreskin is, who whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people, and he have broken my covenant. Then the Lord said concerning Sarai your wife, her name shall no longer be Sarai, but it shall be Sarah. I will bless her and I will give thee a son also of her. Yes, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of many nations. Kings of people shall come from her. So Sarah means mother of many nations. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto me that, that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is 90 years bear a son? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Abraham thy wife shall have a son indeed, and thou shalt call him Isaac. God said, I will make my covenant with Isaac, not Ishmael. I will bless Ishmael, but my covenant will be with Isaac. I will bless Isaac exceedingly, and he will give rise to twelve princes. I will make him a great nation. Sarah will have Isaac next year at a designated time. So in biblical times, before Jesus came on the scene, the Holy Ghost did not live in man. So at appointed times, God would come down to visit with man and then go back up. So God left Abraham and he went up and Abraham took Ishmael and all those born in his house and all that were bought with money that he paid for it. Every male among the men of Abraham's house was circumcised in the flesh of the foreskin that day. Abraham did not wait. Just imagine Abraham 90, 90 years old, 99 years old when he was circumcised and Ishmael his son was 13. This is Genesis 17, 1 through 27. Now a little while later, while Abraham lived in the land of Canaan, in the plains of Mamre near Hebron, and it says in Genesis 18, 2-5, And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. Those men were the angels of the Lord. So the Lord came to visit him again. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from his tent door, and he bowed himself toward the ground. So Abraham brings them into his tent. He feeds them. And then in this is Genesis 18, 2 through 5. So Abraham realized these men were actually angels of the Lord. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, She's in the other tent. 
Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the other tent, which was behind them. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Sarah had already gone through menopause. So therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have waxed old, shall I have pleasure, being old? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child while I am old? And, they, and the Lord said, Is there anything too hard for God? The angel of the Lord said, At the right time I will return unto you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied laughing, for she was afraid. The angel said, No, oh, you did laugh. But this is this was not the only reason the angel was but this wasn't the only reason that the angel was there. Then the angels rose up and looked toward Sodom, and the Abraham went with them, walking a little distance. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I am about to do? Because the angels weren't just there to see Abraham. They had another uh, reason for being there. So God tells him I have come down to visit the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is in Genesis 18. The Lord goes on to say, I hear the roar of wickedness and perversion in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I am thoroughly grieved by what I hear going on. So the angels of the Lord go to leave to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And as they're leaving, Abraham says to God, Will you destroy the just with the wicked? For Lot, remember Lot, is in Sodom. So Abraham says, what if you find 50 righteous men within the city? Will you destroy the city for the 50 righteous men? Because Abraham knew God was going to destroy that city. So Abraham starts talking with God. And he said, that is not your character. 50 righteous men with the wicked. Shall not the judge of the earth do what is right? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous men... I will spare that city. And Abraham said, Behold now, Lord, I have, taken, I have taken liberty with you to speak. Lord, what if you find 45 righteous men in the city? Will you destroy the city for a lack of five? The Lord said unto Abraham, I will not destroy the city if I find 45 righteous men there. And Abraham said once again, Perhaps if you find 40, and God said, I will not destroy it for 40 men's sake. And Abraham goes on to say, Lord, oh, let me not make you angry. But perhaps if you find 30 there. And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find 30 righteous men in that city. Abraham speaks once again and he says, what if you find 20 righteous men there? And the Lord said, I won't destroy it for 20 men's sake. And Abraham said, I will speak one more time, Lord. Please do not be angry. But what if you find ten righteous men there? And the Lord said, I will spare the, t the, the, Lord said, I will spare the city for ten men's sake. This is found in Genesis 18, 23-32. Now when the angels made it to Sodom, they encountered Lot. And Lot, being a spiritual man, immediately recognized that they were the angels and bowed himself down to them. So Lot invited the angels into his house. Now when the angels came into Lot's house, when the angels came into Lot's house to rest, now not one, but all the men of the city, young and old, came to get the two strangers who had just entered the city, for the men wanted to have sex with the two strangers they saw. So they're going to force themselves on these two men that they saw. That's how wicked they were. So Lot goes outside to the men of the city to try to stop them from having sex with angels. And Lot says to them in Genesis 19, 7 through 8, He said, I pray you, brethren, do not do so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters, two daughters now, which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and you can have your way with them. But please do not do anything to these two men who have just come under 
the shadow of my roof. So Lot told the two men that he would rather have his two virgin daughters sleep with them than for them to defile the angels of the Lord. This is how wicked the sight, this is how wicked the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were. And the men of the city said, How dare you judge us? We allowed you to come and live in our city. We will deal worse with you than we will deal with those men in your house. So they said, Move out of our way. And they're beating against the door, trying to get in with the angels, uh, trying to get into Lot's house. And as the men of the city are trying to get into Lot's house, the angels grab Lot, pull him back into the house and slam the door. And, and then the angels caused the men, all, all the men of the city, outside of Lot's door. They stricken him. He, they stricken them with blindness. So now they're fumbling around trying to find the door. Still trying to find the door though. Fumbling around because they can't see. Then the two angels said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here? Sons, sons-in-laws, daughters-in-laws, friends, whoever, anyone else in this city who belongs to you. Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against these people is so great that he's coming down to destroy the city. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-laws uh, who were pledged to marry his daughters. And he said, hurry, get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy these cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. But the sons-in-law, the sons-in-laws thought he was joking, joking. So they would not go. With the coming of the dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wives, take your daughters, get out of here now. Or you will be swept away when the Lord comes down to punish the city. And when Lot hesitated, he hesitated, the two angels grabbed him by the hand and his daughters and they pulled them out of the city to save their lives. Because the Lord was merciful to them for Abraham's sake. As soon as they had brought them out, one of the angels said to them, flee for your lives. Do not look back. Don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be consumed. Lot says to the angels, Can we at least go to the city of Zoar, which is one of, of, the, um, of the other cities of the plains of Jordan? And, and the angels agreed to let Lot go to Zoar. And as they're escaping to Zoar, Lot's wife has the nerve to turn around and look back. And as she looks back at the city that God is destroying, she is immediately, immediately judged by God because he told them not to look back. And she's instantly turned into a pillar of salt. The pillar of Lot's wife is believed to still be standing at the site of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from out of heaven. He overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities that which and that which grew upon and that which grew upon the ground. So everything was plain, any vegetation, everything was destroyed. But his wife looked back from behind her and God turned her into a pillar of salt. Genesis nineteen twenty four through twenty six. Before Jesus ever made it on the scene, on the scene in the Old Testament, when God saw sin, He judged it, and He judged it immediately and swiftly. That why that's why the Lord Jesus is so great because He spares us from the consequence of that 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 sin that God judged so quickly. He didn't have one at nowhere near him, and he destroyed it all. He destroyed totally Sodom and Gomorrah. Eventually, the Dead Sea, over many centuries, it is believed that Sodom and Gomorrah were on were near the shores of the Dead Sea, and others believe and have said that it, they believe that it plunged underneath the sea when it was destroyed. So they right down into the sea. Natives call the Dead Sea the Sea of Lot. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed between 200 and 300 BC before Christ, which is during the Bronze Age. 
This pillar near Jordan is supposed to be the memorial of Lot's wife. It is a huge pillar, huge, made of salt and stone. It overlooks where they believe that the site, what is to believe to be where, where the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah once stood. So God destroyed both cities by raining down fire and brimstone from out of heaven. Brimstone is burning, burning sulfuric rocks. Some said maybe it was a meteor that hit and destroyed the cities. But scientists said no, it could not have been a meteor because if it was a meteor, there would still be craters in the earth where the meteor hit the ground. This is all in Genesis 18, 1 through 33. So Lot dwelt in the mountain with his two daughters uh, when they left Sodom and Gomorrah. They went into Zoar and they ran into the mountain, for he feared dwelling in Zoar, the city. He dwelt in a cave with his two daughters, and the oldest daughter, the oldest daughter, said unto the youngest one, Our father is old, and there is no man to, uh, for us to have children by. Come, come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, lie with him, that we may preserve our bloodline through our father. So Lot's daughters slept with him in order to have children. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in unto him and lay with her father. And he did not perceive when she lay down with him or when she got back up again. And it came to pass the next day. So they're just scheming to get uh, to to in order for them to have children. So the firstborn so the firstborn goes with and sleeps with him the first night, and do the, then they do the very same thing to him the next night. And the youngest daughter goes in and sleeps with him. And that's how they and that's how they became pregnant. They slept with their father. So both children had uh, so both daughters had children by their father Lot. The oldest bare a son and called his name Moab, and the next daughter had a son and called his name Benami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon and the Moabites to this day. They gave uh, uh, rise to the, the nation of the Moabites and the Ammonites came into existence through their ex incestuous relationship with their father. This is Genesis 19, 1 through 38. Now Abraham, now Abraham journeyed south and, and he went from a country and lived between Kadesh and Shur and dwelt in Gear. Gear. Now here... We, here we go again. When Abraham encountered the king of Gear, and his name is Abimelech, Abraham told the king Sarah was his sister again. Abimelech, the king of Gear, sent and took Sarah. Because it's your sister, okay. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night. He came to the king again and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man. For the woman that which you have taken, she is another man's wife, a dead man. Thank goodness Abimelech had enough. Thank goodness Abimelech had not laid with Sarah or tried to, or the Lord would uh, have totally wiped them out. So Abimelech says to the Lord, will you destroy a righteous nation, Lord? Abraham never told us that Sarah was his wife. He told us that Sarah was his sister. Sarah also told me that, uh, that he was her brother. King Abimelech said to God, In the integrity of my heart, Lord, in the integrity of my heart, Lord, and the innocence of my hands, have I done this? God said unto him, In a dream, yes, I know that this is why I stopped you from lying with her. I stopped you. This is why I didn't allow you to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is my prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. Because God touched his whole house. Everybody is sick. Nobody is well. And he's about to kill him if he doesn't restore Abraham's wife back to him. Therefore, therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning 
and called all his servants and told all these things to them. And the men were extremely afraid, fearful. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What have you done to us that thou hast brought me brought on me and on my kingdom so great a sin because these are righteous men they know God also you have done something that ought not to be done why Abraham why because and Abraham says because I thought the fear of God was not in this place and that you would kill me for my wife but honestly I did not lie she is truly my sister she is the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother. Sarah. So Sarah was Abraham's half-sister. So every place they journeyed, she would say that she was his sister, because she was. And Abimelech her sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored Sarah his wife, gave her back. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it is pleasing to you. And to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy husband a thousand pieces of silver. And Sarah was pleased. And Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and all of his house and his wife and his maidservants. And interestingly enough, God even stopped the women in uh, Abimelech's uh, kingdom from bearing children. He shut them up. For the Lord had closed up their wombs, the house of Abimelech, because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So Abraham prayed for them, and everything went back to the way it should. This is in Genesis 20, 1 through 18. And again, the Lord visited Abraham as he said, God is a man of his word. And Sarah conceived and gave birth to a son in her old age at the said time which God had spoken to her. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him and who Sarah birthed. They called his name Isaac. And Abraham circumcised their son Isaac being eight days old as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. A hundred, a century. And Sarah said, God have made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. So she, was overjo- so she was overjoyed at her son's birth. Sarah said, I've given birth to a son in my old age, and Isaac grew, and Abraham made a great feast that same day, and Isaac was weaned. Then Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, Ishmael, mocking them. She said to Abraham, Cast out this woman and her son, for the son of this woman will not be an heir with my son. But this grieved Abraham very much, for he loved his son Ishmael. And God said unto Abraham, Don't be upset because of the boy and because of his mother. Do just as Sarah has told you, for in Isaac shall thou seed be called. I will make a great nation out of Ishmael because he is your son. Abraham rose up the next day, the next morning, took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the boy and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Now the water was gone in the bottle and she placed the boy under a bush. And she walked away from him because she didn't want to see her child die. For they wouldn't be able to last long in a desert with no water. And she sat down and she started to cry. And God heard the boy crying in the wilderness. Notice that he did not hear Hagar crying. But he heard the boy crying because the boy was Abraham's seed. So God calls out from heaven and says, Hagar... What is troubling you, woman? God said, Fear not, for I have heard the cry of your son. Not her cry, the cry of your son in the wilderness. Arise, pick up your son, before pick up your son, for I will make him a great nation. After God said this, she lifted up her eyes, and she looked out, and there was a well of water. 
right there that she had never seen before. And she gave it to her son Ishmael to drink water. So Ishmael grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and he became an archer. And he dwelt in the land of Paran. And he married an Egyptian woman, a woman of color. Then King Abimelech comes to Abram at that time uh, with the chief captain, Pishkel. And they said, We can see that God is with thee in all that you do. For surely they can see the blessing of God on his life. So make an oath with me and with you this day, the king said, that you will not do, deal falsely with me or my son or my son's son, my descendants, but according to the kindness that I have shown you. And Abraham said, I swear. And Abraham agreed with what King Abimelech said. Abraham corrected King Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away from Abraham. But Abimelech said, I don't know anything about the well, nor have you told me anything about a well. This is the first time that I'm hearing about this. Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant together. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, These uh, seven ooh lambs represent that I have digged this well. And he called that place Beersheba, because it means they swear both of them. So they made a covenant at Beersheba. Beersheba. Thus they made a covenant there, and Abimelech rose up, and Pishgol, his chief captain, and his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abram planted a grove in Beersheba and called on the name of the Lord. And he worshipped him, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days hence, for many days. This is in Genesis 21, 1 through 34. Then one day God called out to Abraham and he said, When God usually visits a man is because he's either testing somebody judging somebody or revealing somebody's destiny. Here comes the test. Abraham said to God, Behold, here I am, Lord. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, only son, whom, his only son by Sarah, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and make an altar there and offer your son as a burnt offering unto me on one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So God wants a Isaac, so God wants Isaac to be made a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice on an altar to him. So without question, Abraham rises up early in the morning and saddles his asses and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac and his son, his son, Isaac his son, and a bunch of wood for the burnt offering, and rose up early in that place uh, of which the Lord had told him. After three days they made it there, Isaac lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Abraham uh, said to the young man, And I and the boy will go up and worship and come again to you. Now notice, he said, that I and the boy will come back to you. But this is just my personal opinion. But I believe that Abraham has such great faith in God that if he killed his son, God would miraculous resurrect, miraculously resurrect his son because he has to have an heir or how is he going to be the father of many nations. So I believe that that. Abraham believed that God was going to do something miraculous and bring his son back to him. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, put, put it on his back for him to carry up the mountain. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them up together. And Isaac spoke to his father as they're walking up and saying, My father, he said, uh, and his father said, Here I am. And he says, uh, Father, I see the wood for the fire, but where is a lamb for the burnt offering? 
Abraham said, My son, God will provide a lamb for the burnt offering. So they both went up together, and they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar like he always does, and put the wood on the altar. And then he grabbed Isaac and bound his hands and his feet and lifted him up and put him on the altar. Can you imagine Isaac's face? Now Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife, and he's about to slay his son. And the Lord, the angel of the Lord, calls out to him out of heaven and says, Abraham, Abraham, and he says, Here I am, Lord. And God said, Lay not thy hand upon the boy, neither do him any harm. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him he saw a ram caught its horns in the bushes, or the thicket of the bushes. And the Abraham went and took the ram and offered the ram for a burnt sacrifice unto the Lord instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. He provided a lamb. Because Abraham was so obedient unto God, even unto death, God further blessed him by saying, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand upon the seashore. Thy sea shall possess the gates of your enemies, and in thy sea shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. This is Genesis twenty-two sixteen through 18. So Abraham returned to the young men that were waiting for him down at the bottom of the mountain, and they returned to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt in Beersheba. Then a while later, Abraham found out that his sister-in-law named Milcah gave birth to children by his brother Nahor. Now Nahor had eight sons, and the youngest, uh, the youngest son was named um, Bethel. And Bethel gave birth to Rebekah. This is in Genesis 22, 1 through 24. And Sarah was uh, 127 years old at this time. And Sarah died in, in Kerjath Arba, which is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Now Abram spoke to his son, to the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger, and I live here with you. Give me a possession or a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead wife out of my sight. The sons of Heth answered Abraham and said unto him, Hear us, my, my Lord, thou art a mighty king among us. Choose for yourself the grave that you want to bury your dead wife. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And so Abraham chose the king, cave of Machpelah for a possession, and he asked Ephron, the man's name was Ephron, the Hittite, how much should we, do you want for this grave for my wife? And Ephron said, the field I gave, give freely, and the cave that is therein, I give it to you. In the presence of the son of sons of my people, I give it to thee, bury your dead. And Abraham bowed down before him, and the people of the land, but still chose to pay the people in silver for the land. So Abraham gave them a hundred shekels of silver. So not only did they give Abraham a place to bury Sarah, but they also gave him land there as a place for possession. And Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Mechapala before Mamre. The same is called Hebron in the land of Canaan. This is Genesis 23, 1 through 20. Now Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant in his house that ruled over all that he had, 
And he said, Put, I pray thee, thy hand upon under my thigh, and I will make and swear with thee an oath. And I will swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son of the daughters of Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But you shall go back to my country and to my people and relatives and take a wife of my, for my son Isaac. And he said, and his servant says, Yes, I will, but what if the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land? Abraham said unto him, Beware, do not take my son to them. The Lord took me away from my family for a reason. If the woman is not willing to come, then you are clear of this oath. And the servant put his hand underneath Abraham's thigh, underneath his master's thigh, he swore to him concerning that matter. He made an oath to Abraham. Then the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For, for he was given authority by Abraham to make decisions for him. And he arose and he went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Uh, Abraham's brother, he made, he made his camels to kneel down in the city by a well of water at the time of the evening. This is during the time when the women would come out and draw water out of the well. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, uh, let this happen quickly and show me kindness unto my master Abraham, behold, behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Let it come to pass that the woman to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, I pray that she shall say, and I will know by her saying, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that you have chosen for your servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that you have shown kindness to your master Abraham. And it came to pass before he had even stopped praying to God, before he could barely get it out of his mouth, that behold, Rebekah walked up, who was born to Bethel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. So Rebecca is Isaac's Abraham's son. So Rebecca is Isaac, Abraham's son's second cousin. So she had her pitcher upon her shoulder, her pitcher of water, and the women, and she was a very, very beautiful woman and to look upon. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And Abraham's servant saw her and ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water from your pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. She said, I will draw the water for your camels, just as he had just prayed. Just like he had just prayed to the Lord. She responded in the exact same way. Isn't God good? And she drew the water for him and for his camels. Now that's an honorable woman. And being in amazement that everything he has suddenly prayed for is manifesting before him, the man took off. Go, the man uh, gave her golden earrings, a half a uh, a half a shekel in weight, and two braces for her hands, and ten shekels of weight of gold, and said, "Whose daughter are you?" And she said, I am Bethel, the son of Milcah. My grandfather is Nahor. Come, we have enough room for you to stay with us. And the man uh, bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. He couldn't believe it. It happened just like that. And Abraham servant being so grateful that everything worked out so quickly that he worshiped God there. So the servant went to Rebekah's house and told the family that he was Abraham's servant and the Lord had blessed uh, Abraham greatly and he had become a great man and he had uh, great wealth and he had given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and all the things that God had bestowed and blessed Abraham with. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son. And uh, my master has sent me here to find a wife 
for his son. So the servant told Nahor and his family everything that Abraham told him to do, that he must find a wife for Isaac out of the house of Israel, but that the woman must be willing to go to Isaac and cannot, uh, Isaac cannot come here. So Nahor and his family say, uh, the thing that proceeded from the Lord, we cannot speak against thee, bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go. Really? Take her and go and let her be with our master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. So everything lining up perfectly. And it came to pass when Abraham's servant heard these their words, he worshiped the Lord again. He's so astonished that they're in agreement with everything that he wanted done and happened so quickly. He didn't have to search out women. He had to go through 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 the land looking for the right woman for um, Isaac. She walked right up to him, bowing himself to the earth. That uh, the servant worshiped God and brought forth jewels and silvers and jewels of gold and garments for them for Rebecca, and they called Rebecca and said unto her. Will thou go with this man? And what she said, Yes, I'll go. That easy. God is brilliant. And Isaac went out to uh, now Isaac went out to meditate in the field during the evening time, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming, and Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she jumped down off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, uh, What man is this that cometh in the field to meet us? And, um, and the servant had said, Oh, it's my master, Isaac. Therefore she took off her veil and she covered herself. Because uh, you're not supposed to see your husband until the marriage. So she covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her in unto his mother, Sarah's tent, and, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death because of Rebekah. This is Genesis 24, 1 through 67. Then again Abraham took a wife, and her name was... So after death, after uh, Sarah's death... Uh, Abraham got, uh, took another wife, her name was Keturah, and she bare many children to Abraham, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Now he's married, and but, but unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave them gifts and sent them away from Isaac. He didn't want them around him, so th he sent them east. And, and these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived. He was 165 years old that Abraham gave up the ghost and died a good old age, a man full in years. And they buried Abraham in the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. They, uh, there Abraham was buried uh, and he was buried with Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt in Laharoi. This is Genesis 25, 1 through 11. This is the life of the great patriarch Abraham, father of the Christian faith. Thank you for taking this time with me and joining me. This is the word of the day. Please like sh and share this channel. It's free and you help me to grow my channel. And by all means, subscribe. And please remember to click the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when I upload future videos. Thank you for joining me. May God bless you in everything you do. See you next time.